All right, so we last left off in the last video. Uh, we have our two tables now. We have our products table, a stores table. Both have records inside of them. Um, and what we could do now, uh, for example, is we could get all the products that are, um, you know, for store ID two. So we could, you know, that query would be select all from products where store ID is equal to two. We could run that, and we see that we get those, uh, just only those products back, uh, which is great. But it's not too much different from what we were doing before. You know, when we first looked at where statements, you know, and we could, you know, we could add on to this. So. Uh, we could say and uh, price, you know, is greater than ten dollars. Okay, so we can do that, and now we get only the products from store two that are greater than ten dollars. Um, but still, it's not different. It's not really any different than what we were doing before, right? We're not uh, pulling data from both tables. So that's what we want to look at in this video. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get our first glimpse at looking at joins. Okay, so we're just going to look at the join keyword, which uh, when you just use join by itself, doesn't enter join. There are several types, different types of joins that you can use in SQL. Uh, but right now, we're just going to look at the join keyword itself, which again doesn't enter join. So uh, to set that up, uh, let's go ahead and just get back to a simple select here. Okay, now let's think about what we want to do here. So let's just um, for right now, let's select all the columns. Okay, what we want to show as a result. I'd like to see uh, the products, kind of just like we did, all the products for store two that are greater than $10, but I'd also like to see the store information uh, show up in the results set down here, okay? So to do that, what we first need to do is we need to uh, call the join keyword. So we'll say join, okay, just like this. And now we need to tell it what table to join with. So we already have the products table here. And for right, what we want to do next is we want to join with the stores table. So we can just say stores, okay, just like this. And now, leaving it right here, let's go to a DB diagram and we can kind of get a visual here of what's happening. So with the join that we wrote, uh, essentially what you can kind of think about happening is that behind the scenes, like we've taken these two tables and now we've smashed them together like this. Let's think about it like that. Okay, so that's that's our starting point here. We're just putting two tables together. but what we need to do is we need to tell it how to align these two tables. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is back over in table plus, we're going to use the on keyword. So we'll say on. And now what we want to write is we want to write uh, this when you want to use the columns from this table first. So we'll say join on products dot store ID. And then we want to set that equal to some value from the other table, from the stores table. So what we want to do is stores.id. Okay. So now what you can think about happening is if we go back to DB diagram here, instead of just, you know, arbitrarily slamming these tables together, now what we've said is, hey, uh, products table, your store ID column. Okay. Take that and align it with the ID column from the stores table. So essentially what is kind of happening to get a visual here is something like this, right? This is the joining point of the two tables. Okay. So that's what this sets up right here, how the tables are aligned and joined by a, a column. Okay. So for this join, we're going to do it this way. And then what we can do is we can say, let's just get all the ones, uh, for product or for store ID too. Okay. So we'll say where store, ID equal to okay, or is equal to two. So let's go ahead and run this. And now when we run this, we see that we get uh, a lot more than we've seen in the past back in our results set here. Let me just expand these a little so we can kind of get a cleaner visual. So we see that we get all of the things, uh, all of the columns from the products table here, right? So we get all the columns, well, ID, name, product code, price, max discount, store ID. And now these are only the products for store ID of two, but then we get store information uh, for that store via the join. So from the join, we're able to pluck also all the columns from the stores table as well. So that's why we see the ID and the uh, name uh, from the stores table here. All right. So now what if we wanted to just show in our results, uh, let's, let's say we just want to see the name of the product, the price of the product, and then the name of the shop. Okay. So let's just say for now, let's just start with name and price. Okay. 
So let's start here and let's try to run this query and see now we get an issue because both of the tables, they both have a name column on them, okay? So this, as you've seen the error here, uh, it says column reference name is ambiguous. That's again, that's because both tables have a name column. So we have to be specific here. So the way we can unambiguate this is to say products.name, okay? Now if we run this, we see that we get the name and the price uh, just from the products table, okay? Now, if we also wanted to get the name of the store, let's uh, put it after here, after the price here. So we can say stores dot name. Okay. And now if we run this. Now we see that we get the name of the product, the price of the product and the name of the store here. Okay. So when you have two uh, tables that you're working with or more that all, that share a, a common column name, you have to, you know, set it up some way for it to not be ambiguous to your SQL statements here. And the way to do that is you can just uh, prefix the uh, column name with the name of the table and with a dot. And again, still here, we could filter this even more with our where. Uh, this query is getting a little bit long here. So let's uh, let's kind of clean this up here. So I'll put this stuff on a new row. So we'll say select all of the column stuff there. We'll do the from on its own thing. We'll do the join on its own thing as well. Uh, we'll move this down here. Uh, we'll leave the on on that single line. Okay, and we'll do this and let's just run this, make sure that uh, syntactically we're good. So this just gives us a little bit more room to work with. Uh, and now let's also say and price is greater than $10, okay? Now if we run this, now we see that we drop the, uh, I don't remember what product it was, I think it was the glasses maybe? Let's see, yeah, the glasses. So again, you can, the same uh, where stuff applies here and actually let me put this on a new line so it's a, a little bit cleaner to see. So we can continue to put more wares here after we do the join, but you'll wanna do the, uh, the where after the join clause uh, when you're doing this sort of stuff. Now what about if we wanted uh, either, you know, the products where store ID is two and products where you know, or just any product from any store where price is less than $10. So what we can do here is we can flip this and we can say, or, and now if we run this, now we see we get all the products from Bob shop, right? He's only got three, but then we also get products from soap and things uh, that are under $10 because they match this, uh, this other condition here with this or. So that's our first look at joins and working with multiple tables and setting up uh, relationships via, you know, foreign keys here. Um, I would suggest to play around in Table Plus right now before moving on to the next video a little bit. Try and, you know, th think of new things you can do uh, in your where clauses uh, to try and get the right results back. Um, just experiment and have some fun with it. So do that for a little while. Make sure you get it in your, uh, you know, get the code in your fingertips. Maybe drop the tables, recreate them, try, try starting over from scratch, you know, or make a new database and make new tables over there you know, and, you know, put some data in those tables and just start to play around more with what you know. The more you expose yourself to it, the faster you'll pick it up and the more you'll retain the information. So do that. And then I will see you back here in the next video.